All right, welcome back. So I have added a bunch of new images here, and you can see I have uh, I've gotten rid of the padding that was inside of the panel. Uh, if you inspect the element, you can see the panel has a 15 pixel um, padding. You can go ahead and set that to zero and set your image width to 100%, and that will give us these um, uniquely sized Pinterest boxes. And what I want to show you now is that we want to make it so that uh, we can use masonry to style all of these the way that we want to to make it look like Pinterest. And we're going to be using masonry, so what we're going to do first is go ahead and install masonry. And we can do that by um, doing bower install masonry dash dash save. And this is really important um, to keep in mind that this is going to require you have already set up um, Bower to put your Bower components into your vendor folder, uh, which was in one of our earlier videos. So now we'll go ahead and save that, and we can check to see that that is in fact being installed here. So you'll see we have now a few different things. We have masonry as well as a few different dependencies that masonry relies on. And so now if we go ahead and uh, let's restart our server because we've installed a new component. We want to make sure that we aren't going to miss out on that. And what we're going to also do is create a new JavaScript file. So I'm going to call this Pinterest.js. And in here, we're going to want to um, run our masonry code. So if we pull up masonry and take a look at initialize with jQuery, um, we need to do a few things here. So if we take a look up above, we need to include our um, path to masonry.pkgd.min. Um, we actually do need to do this in our application.js manifest file. So if we come into JavaScripts here, um, application.js, here we've included Bootstrap and jQuery. We also need to include um, our masonry. So let's go ahead and come down here and look at what we've got here. So we're going to do masonry. And I don't believe that will work by itself. We're going to have to do masonry-dist slash dist slash masonry.pkgd.min. You don't need to include the .js. It will do that for us. Um, but you want to make sure that you get this masonry.pkgd, not masonry.js out here. So we've got that included. And then the way that masonry is going to work is that we need to create a container that we can uh, access using a class. So here we have grid. And then we're going to have each item inside of that grid using um, a class like grid item. We already kind of have this. We have access to our pin class. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to actually add a class to our columns so that we can um, properly organize things around on the page. Uh, if we look at our code here and go back to our view, you'll see that if we tried to do masonry on this div, uh, you know, it's it's not the thing that's being contained. It's this element that's being contained for each pin. Uh, and so what we can do here uh, is that we could actually call it on row, but row is is used a lot uh, in Bootstrap. So what I'm going to do is call this Pinterest grid. And then in the div class column, I'm going to do pin item. And we're going to then be able to use both of these to instantiate our masonry. So um, that looks pretty similar to that. We could have done grid and grid item if we wanted to. Um, finally, we're going to also give our grid item a width. Uh, we only have one width, so we don't need to do grid item width two. Um, and what we're going to do is put that into our style sheet. And this is actually going to change for us. Um, we are going to be using a fixed width of 200, but we're going to fix that in a little bit here um, because we don't actually want to do a fixed width of 200. So finally, we want to then use our selector.masonry 
um, to turn that grid into a masonry grid. So I'm going to copy and paste this. We're going to go into that Pinterest.js file we created, and our item is going to be called pin item, and this was called Pinterest grid. Get rid of that comment. And then our column width is going to match the column width that we created here. We need to change this to pin item. And that will give us a width of 200. And this will give us our column width of 200. So now if we refresh, we should see something a little bit different, which we do. So here you'll see that now masonry has taken over uh, and created something that looks a little bit nicer. Um, we can also see that we have our bootstrap columns fighting us a little bit. So it's not working exactly the way we want it to yet. Um, let me just make sure there's no errors on the page. No, there actually is. And it looks like Bootstrap's JavaScript requires jQuery. So somehow we did manage to break something. Um, let's see. One thing we do want to change right off the bat, though, is that we need to change our masonry code to run uh, using document.ready. And that's because we want to make sure that the document has been fully loaded before we try to masonry that grid. Uh, there's going to be a few other changes that we're going to need to make here as well that are rails oriented using turbo links, um, but we'll get to those in just a second. So let me just refresh this again. Um, doesn't look that much different. And what we want to do now is we're using Bootstrap. And so if we look at our code here, we have this is uh, call medium three that's giving each of these columns a width. And we want to actually use um, adjustable widths instead of defining 200 as our column width. And so if we actually come into somewhere in here we have bootstrap, let's see. And so part of this is going through all of the documentation, figuring out where things are. So under extras bootstrap, you can see an example of how to use masonry with the bootstrap grid. And what I'm going to go ahead and do here is skip this. So here you can see how you're going to use this. And so the way that we can do it is instead of defining our column width as 200, we can actually give it a class and it will use the width of that class as our column width. And so what I'm going to do is give it pin item as our width. As this column changes widths, pin item will actually change widths. So instead of 200, I'm going to do dot pin item. And now I'm going to come back in here and get rid of that CSS that restricts everything to 200 pixels. So if we come back in here, refresh the page, now you'll see that we have um, our properly aligned bootstrap grid, which looks great. Uh, however, you'll see that this guy is overlaying this one. And the reason this is happening uh, is kind of interesting. That it, the images have not fully loaded when masonry has been called. And so technically it thinks that um, one of these images is either non-existent or really, really short. And so masonry, um, the, or rather the creator of masonry has actually created a tool for this called images loaded. So if we go and pull that up, imagesloaded.desandro.com, I believe. Yeah. So images loaded um, will allow you to do something similar to document.ready, um, where we can include it and then say, when all of our images have loaded, run some code. And that will fix the issue that we're seeing with um, those images being the incorrect height. So um, let's go ahead and pop over to our terminal. We're going to do bower install images loaded dash dash save. We will need to add that to our payload. So we'll need to update application.js. We have jQuery in here. We also will want to include uh, images loaded. So let's go see what we've got inside of there. So here's images loaded and it's going to be slash images loaded dot pkgd dot min 
And I think we were getting that error about Bootstrap. I'm going to move Bootstrap down so that jQuery is included first. That should fix that issue. Um, but now, by including this, we'll also need to restart our server. Just because we've added a new component to our project, we want to make sure that we have that available to us. And now let's go check out our JavaScript. So we're doing document.ready. Now we're going to do uh, .pinterest grid dot images loaded function and now inside of here we can call our masonry code so now let's go ahead and refresh the page and you'll see that not only is it not overlapping but it noticed that now this image pushes all the way down here there's this gap here and it moved rogue one over to the side so if we come in and add a new pin, let's do Harrison Ford again. You'll see we're taken to our show page, which we haven't done a lot with. Let's go to pins. Um, there is an issue with this that we need to fix. So when you click on these URLs at the top of the page, uh, masonry doesn't get fired correctly. Uh, and so what we want to do here is actually change our JavaScript to um, fire on a page load. So document.ready, if I refresh the page, will get fired. And you'll see that this will get filled in properly. Uh, but again, if I click on pins, it goes right back to the way it was before. And so we're going to have to fix that next. Okay, so to fix this issue, we are going to come into our JavaScript and the code that we want to run uh, in this case is going to be all of this. And we want to run it when document's ready, but there's another condition that runs um, that Rails is firing off for us, which is called on page load. And we would then do a function here as well. Uh, but what we want to do is just grab all the code that we care about, and let's go ahead and create our own function for this. So let's say masonry all the things. And this will get called. And now what we can do is take masonry all the things, which is our function, and say when the page loads, run masonry all the things. And when document.ready happens, masonry all the things. And I'm going to move this down below here just so that we can keep adding more functions to this as we need to. Um, but what this will do, if we refresh our page now, is that you'll see that we have our grid, but if I click on pins, we also have our grid. So um, it's really interesting to see what happens firing JavaScript. If we refresh the page, we get firing JavaScript, the page loads. If we take out this page load here and refresh the page, we get firing JavaScript, but if I click on pins, you'll notice that the JavaScript never fires. And so all of this code never runs, and therefore masonry never gets um, the ability to make things look nice. And so let's go ahead and get that alert out of there and add our page load in there. Refresh our page, and it's looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and add one more. Han Solo 2. Just want to see how things are filling into our grid. Go to pins, and it's looking pretty darn good. Um, the one thing I do want to change real quick here is that when you create a pin, it takes you to the show page. Let's change that so that when you create a pin, we actually end up going to the pins path. So let's go to our pins controller. Under create, you'll see here that we um, redirect to the pin. Uh, pin was successfully created. We can change this to pins path. Uh, and that's the path to take us to all of our pins. Uh, and we can always see that by running rake routes. And here you have pins. So pins path will take you to pins pound index. And that's the desired effect that we want. So now if we save that, create a new pin on solo 3, create a new pin we get taken to our new pins. 
Um, so it's looking pretty good. Uh, in the next future videos, we'll be adding more features to this, uh, as well as locking out some of these features. If you uh, go ahead and log out and go to pins, you'll see that we still have edit and delete buttons. We can't do anything with them, but we should probably take care of getting rid of them and cleaning some things up. So see you in the next one.